Hailing from the planet Naboo, the politician known as Vidar Kim was born nearly a century before the Battle of Yavin. Upon completing his mandatory years of service within the legislative youth program as was customary on Naboo, Kim went on to serve as an administrative aide to the senator of the Chamo sector, of which his planet was the capital world. Then, Naboo had been a largely unspoiled world, having been ruled by conservative monarchs with isolationist policies, and Vidar Kim wished to keep his world from being plundered and exploited by corporate interests. One of his allies in the fight to protect Naboo from the influence of outsiders was Kosinga, the patriarch of House Palpatine. Vidar Kim forged a close relationship with his supporter's eldest son, the eventual Sith Lord, Darth Sidious. The young Palpatine had a strained relationship with his own father, though he accepted Vidar as a friend and mentor during his own time serving with the Legislative Youth Program. Palpatine never saw eye to eye with either his father nor his mentor where galactic politics were concerned, and it was his wish to see Naboo break with its isolationist tradition. Rejecting his given name, Palpatine would go on to secretly undermine the efforts of his family and closest friends by leaking details of Naboo's rich loads of plasma in hopes of encouraging the opening of Naboo to the wider galaxy. The discovery caught the attention of the Trade Federation, as well as the financial group, Damask Holdings. Unbeknownst to everyone, including Palpatine, the group's leader, Higo Damask, was in fact the Dark Lord of the Sith named Darth Plagueis. Plagueis saw Palpatine's power and potential, and helped nurture the ambition that the youth had fostered on his own eventually even manipulating Palpatine into wiping out his own family as a means of emancipating himself. Over the next seven years, Palpatine apprenticed himself to the Dark Lord, playing politics and posing as a lackey for his superiors on Naboo while secretly mastering the ways of the Dark Side. Upon becoming an ambassador, Palpatine traveled to Coruscant in order to join Vidar Kim in the Senate Rotunda. Bon Topolo, the current king of Naboo and political rival of Vidar Kim's, had placed Palpatine in a position to succeed his mentor as senator of the Chamal sector. Vidar Kim, who at this point had been married for many happy years, had sired three sons, the youngest of which was called Ronhar. Little Ronhar had been discovered to be Force-sensitive, and Vidar, having two elder sons and heirs to his legacy, had decided to turn the boy over to the Jedi Knights for training. However, in 54 BBY, while attending a celebration as part of a pod racing event on Malastair, Vidar Kim's entourage received news that the senator's entire family had been killed in a starship accident. This tragedy crushed the senator, and the broken man set out on a desperate quest to secure his legacy by bringing his youngest son and only surviving heir back into the fold on Naboo to carry on the family lineage. To the Elder Kim's dismay, however, Ronhar rejected the Senator's notion out of hand. The Jedi were his family, and his duty was to the Republic and the Force, not to Naboo, nor the Kim family name. Dispirited by this, but still unwilling to give in, Senator Kim devised another plan over the following two years. 
Convinced that the deaths of his family had actually been arranged by the king of Nabu himself as a means of forcing Vidar Kim into early retirement, the senator began gathering evidence in order to present his case before the Jedi High Council in order to expose Bontopolo's corruption. Before setting out to once again meet with his son Ronhar in order to put his plan into motion, Vidar Kim, unfortunately, revealed his intentions to the one man he trusted most. Having learned of Vidar Kim's plan firsthand, Palpatine brought the information to his master. It was Plagueis who years earlier had secured Topolo's throne, and through the corrupt king, Plagueis had secured Palpatine's lofty position within the Senate. Vidar's plans to contact the Jedi threatened all of these machinations, and so the senator had become a liability. The pair of Sith enlisted the help of a mysterious figure called Sait Pestage to arrange the senator's assassination. From a list provided by Pestage, Palpatine selected a group of Maladians to carry out the contract. Whilst riding with his son in an airspeeder, Senator Kim made one final unsuccessful attempt to change his son's mind about staying with the Jedi Order. Before the Senator could reveal details of Toplo's corruption, he was silenced forever when the Meladian assassin opened fire. The assassin foolishly decided to attack Ronhar Kim as well, wishing to add a Jedi to her kill list. Ronhar got the better of the Meladian and began using the Force to draw out the truth behind the assassin's motivations. However, the attempt was thwarted when the captive committed suicide to prevent interrogation. In the wake of his failure to prevent the assassination, Ronhar Kim attended Vidar's funeral alone and pondered over whether he should leave the Jedi Order after all. It was at this moment that he met the new senator of Naboo. Ronhar Kim held the distinction of being the first Jedi Knight the infamous Sith Lord ever encountered. And, from a most unlikely source, Ronhar regained the confidence to remain with the Jedi Order, with Palpatine's false encouragement. At Palpatine's suggestion, the two vowed to share their knowledge of their respective worlds with one another. From Palpatine, Ronhar could hope to learn more about the workings of the Senate, and through him, would one day even have a voice in shaping the Republic. And through Ronhar, Palpatine professed the hope to learn more about the ways of the Jedi, so as to know best how to manipulate them. Decades later, and shortly after the fall of Darth Plagueis, the defeat of Darth Maul, and Palpatine's election to the office of Supreme Chancellor, Ronhar Kim met with his old friend in the Chancellor's office on Coruscant. It was at this moment that a Republic senator named Viento called upon the Chancellor to increase his own security detail for fear that the traditional Senate Guard had been infiltrated by conspirators bent on assassinating Palpatine. Palpatine dismissed these concerns, only to find himself facing a quartet of traitors, each of whom opened fire. Reacting with all the characteristic speed and precision of a Jedi, Ronhar Kim leapt into action and defended his friend, taking out three of the traitors in quick succession before once again attempting to draw out the truth, only to once again watch helplessly as the traitor committed suicide. An additional ten years later, during the Clone Wars, Ronhar Kim, a Jedi Master now, along with his Padawan, Tapnar Paul, hatched a daring plan. Given Count Dooku's revelation to Obi-Wan Kenobi on Geonosis that a Sith had gained control of the Senate, Tapnar Paul believed that if the Jedi requested the members of the Senate to submit to a midichlorian count check, then they could root out the Dark Lord. Having built up a relationship with Palpatine, Ronhar Kim decided to include the Chancellor in their plan. The pair of Jedi even suggested that if Palpatine himself volunteered to be the first to submit for testing, then the rest of the Senate would become more receptive to the idea. 
Palpatine deftly pretended to consider the plan before leaving the Jedi, having convinced them to hold off on bringing the idea forth to the Council to lessen the chances of the Sith Lord learning of their plan. Shortly thereafter, Darth Sidious tipped off Count Dooku to apprise him of Ronhar's movements. At his master's command, Count Dooku dispatched an altogether overwhelming force to the planet Mersin, where Ron Harkim and his forces were stationed. The Republic fleet commanded by Captain Pelion withdrew from the impossible situation, and Tapnar Paul was killed, attempting to fly to his master's aid after refusing to retreat when he had the chance. Alone, with only nine clone troopers to back him up, General Kim made his final stand. During his last moments, Ronhar Kim realized the grim truth. The Sith Lord had somehow learned of his intentions, and now the plan would die with him. What he never realized was that he, like so many others, had placed his faith in the wrong man. Wow. You know, it's difficult to know what to say as a follow-up. Once you've heard it, the artistry, irony, tragedy, and refinement of Ron Harkim's story seem fairly obvious, don't they? Not much more really needs to be said. What I'd really like to focus on are the two major aspects of this character that have led to him becoming just this enduring figure within my memory and a major part of my fondness for the EU. Those two things are the importance of even so-called average Jedi and the story is centered around them and the amount of mileage that the writers and authors who dealt with this character really managed to coax out of his relatively tiny story and why the Star Wars mythos was made better for it. Ron Harkim believed himself to be almost perfectly average. He considered himself an adequate Jedi with merely sufficient levels of skill to perform his duty. And he's absolutely right about that. What makes him so special and memorable is not his strength in the Force, but rather the consequences of his actions and how they impacted the Star Wars universe despite his minuscule amount of time in the spotlight. Darth Plagueis once noted that the actions of the young Anakin Skywalker echoed across the stars. In my opinion, and against all odds and expectations, the same could and should be said of Ron Harkim. Prior to the release of the Darth Plagueis novel, this guy had only one appearance in a one-off single issue of Star Wars Republic, which spanned several decades in order to show how Palpatine and Master Kim influenced each other's lives. And even back then, it was still an awesome story. This is a guy whose actions helped lead to the formation of the Red Guards, who would be reformed into the iconic Imperial Royal Guard. He was the first Jedi Palpatine ever met. That alone is an interesting distinction. The botched Meladian attack, and the fact that Ronhar survived it, even led to a circuitous connection to Darth Plagueis. Plagueis only survived the near-disastrous attack on the Phobosi Lodge because of information St. Pestage was able to gather from the Meladian leadership in response to Ronhar's actions. 
and Master Kim himself, along with his Padawan, Tap Narpal, had hatched a plan that, if allowed to be implemented, might have saved the citizens of the galaxy a great deal of heartache and pain. He's a character whose entire life story amounts to a footnote in the grand scheme of the Star Wars timeline, and all of his observed endeavors ended in failure of one sort or another, but he is still a fantastic character. There are different groups of Star Wars fans with differing interests, of course. That goes well without saying. But the reason that I mention such an obvious truth is to point out that there are some who do not believe that the Star Wars Expanded Universe has merit, and that only the films count. Ron Har Kim is one of the first figures that comes to my mind whenever I run into somebody that holds that opinion. A catalyst for the creation of the Imperial Guard. The inadvertent savior of Darth Plagueis. General of the Republic. Defender of the Chancellor. Hunter of the Sith. Ron Harkim was all these things, and even as his successes sent echoes across the stars, so too did his failings. As Palpatine himself mockingly said, Ron Harkim's story shows us that even an average Jedi is indeed extraordinary. And his fate serves as a grim reminder. Evil may wear many masks, none so dangerous as the mask of virtue.